Uh, welcome you to all uh, today's uh, research seminar series. We are hosting this program on Zoom. It is being broadcast live on the Facebook page of Martin Sotari. Uh, the title of today's seminar is Earthquake After Song, Music Videos and the Imagining of an Online Nepali Public. Our speaker is Michael Hart, Emeritus Professor of Nepali and Himalayan Studies, SOAS, University of London. Uh, let me introduce him. Uh, he has published 15 books, over 40 articles, many book chapters on Nepali language, culture, lang literature, histories, and politics of Himalayan societies. And he has translated, translated a large number of Nepali texts. Uh, one of his uh, recent published journal article is, Before the Dust Settled, is Nepal's 2015 settlement or seismic constitution, which was published in 2020 in journal called Conflict, Security, and Development, volume 20, number three. Uh, in the beginning, Michael Hart will speak for 40 minutes, and then the question and answer session will start. If you would like to ask a question, or if you have a comment, please use chat box or raise hand option if you are viewing on Zoom. If you are connected through Facebook, please write your question, comments on the chat box. Now, I would like to request Michael Hart to give his presentation. Uh, you have 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Namaskar, Sobema. Harshit ji le chengs ma bolnubu, morta Nepali ma bolchi shurama. Ajan namaskar, Sobema. Covid grasta belayat bata. Ani MC ka Martin Chautari ka saatiro like pani dhanyavad dina chanchi malai nimchai dina bhai kuma. Uh, Ajuko made a presentation uh, 2019 ma gari andasandhan ma uh, atarit hunecha. Uh, your paper uh, popular communications banne uh, journal ma uh, your sal uh, niskane wala cha uh, malai asa cha. Your andasandhan sway project uh, sway banne project andar kar gari eko thiyo. Uh, funding che uh, UK sarkar ko global challenges research fund bata aiko thiyo. I need to project ko bishay to Nepal ma bahar saal ko bukamp ko rajnaitik samajik ra sanskritik asad haru ko ko bishay. Ma chayin English ma bul chu, ma da presentation English ma honi wala cha, ki na bane tiyo paper chayin English ma le kiya cha, ani ma le chayin Nepali ma anuvar ka na bihaya na. Ta da chalfal ba di spashti kalan haru hami English ma ki English ma ki Nepali ma honi karna saak chayin. अब तो मेरे मुझे शेयर को चु मेरो पावरपॉइंट चा तो पारो लाइ बोर्ड ना लागो उस बने रा अन्य मार्चे पेपर चे प्रेजेंट कर चु चु समय समय अंदर पढ़ने हो ब्लॉक ओके तो मैं शुरू कर चु सो द मैग्नीट्यूड 7.8 एर्थक्वेक दैट स्ट्रक सेंट्रल नेपाल ऑन 25 ऑफ अप्रैल 2015 inspired a, a flurry of literary and cultural production as disasters so so often do. Nepali language poetry inevitably uh, was a very large part of this outpouring and I've written about this elsewhere. Um, but nowadays literary texts uh, also share Nepali public space with cultural production in other genres and forms which are shared through a variety of media. The, the popular music video is a strand of Nepali cultural production that I think has not been subjected to very much um, academic study so far. As of the 22nd, no, sorry, as, the, as of the 2nd of April 2019, a total of 54 earthquake related Nepali language music videos um, were accessible on, on YouTube, and these had all been published on YouTube within five months after the, the earthquake itself. 12 of these videos had recorded between 100,000 and 1 million views, and one had recorded over 1.6 million. In his study of um, India's cassette revolution, Peter Manuel described cassettes as ideal vehicles for socio-political mobilization. He said they were not mobilized by the state or by any corporate uh, oligopoly, they were resistant to censorship and illiteracy was no impediment to accessing or appreciating them. 
maybe we could say the same today of, of music videos, as we, as Peter Manuel said um, about cassettes um, all those years ago in India. Now, the primary purpose of a music video about Nepal's 2015 earthquake, which has been posted on YouTube by a Nepali content creator for a Nepali viewership, is to pr produce what anthropologists call affect, an emotional response in its intended audience. So I believe that a video, these videos um, can tell us a great deal um, about their creator's response to the earthquake and the human disaster that it engendered, and also about this creator's, content creator's assumptions about their intended audience's receptiveness to particular messages and codes. Therefore, I believe that um, these videos can give us some ideas about possible constructions, possible imaginings of the online Nepali public. So the question really I'm asking is, what kinds of public do these videos call into being by their content, either visual or lyrical, by their linguistic registers and by their musical styles? To put it very simply, what are these videos saying and who are they trying to say it to? So my discussion today in this paper is based on an analysis of, of five Nepali music videos that were published on YouTube um, over four, a four week period between the 22nd of May and the 22nd of June 2015. So that's about between one and two months after the earthquake itself. So very, very immediately after the earthquake. Many more earthquake videos uh, were published, music videos in Nepali were published on YouTube during this period and afterwards. Um, but the first three of my sample of five are, are three of the four most widely viewed Nepali language earthquake music videos. And of course, given that they were published quite soon after the earthquake, they give quite an immediacy of response to the disaster. Each of the three songs I need to move to the next slide, let's see, ah, yes. Um, so each of the first three songs offers a, a, different, a different musical genre and also a slightly different uh, treatment of the, of the subject matter. I'm not going to play you the videos, but I'm gonna give you some stills just to give you some sense of, of the content of, of the video. So this first one is uh, Prakash Kartuwa's nine minute folk song, Ayo Barai Bukamp Ayo, Bukampa Ayo. Um, which was published on Music Nepal's YouTube channel on the 22nd of May, 2015. So this narrates the earthquake as a story in a generic Batao Nepara form that dates back to a time long before modern news media were established in Nepal. So the video is quite simple. It simply consists of uh, the artist, uh, the singer singing into a studio microphone, and this is interlaced it into, uh, swaps to and fro between still photographs and video footage of, of the earthquake aftermath itself. And some examples are, are there on, the, on that slide. The second um, video uh, is a five minute rap performance by three Nepali hip hop artists. Uh, this video uh, lasts about five minutes. It was, it was taken down from YouTube in March 2019, but uh, with unique poet, uh, with his permission, we have archived this in the, the Sway Project's digital library and SOAS library, so it can still be watched uh, today. Each artist performs his own section of the song from a different location, and they express anguish over the suffering of the earthquake victims. They challenge the earthquake to explain and justify its actions, and they urge Nepal Nepalis to to come together in solidarity and they accuse Nepali politicians of, of corruption and, and negligence. Uh, the third uh, video is, is uh, Pankaj Shrestha's uh, pop ballad, a uh, ballad, uh, Besak Bhaira Bhattasal, uh, published on the 31st of May, 2015. This begins and ends with the image of a clock's hands spinning rapidly, uh, presumably towards the the fateful date of the song's title. 
The first half of the video consists of images of beautiful, peaceful Nepal, Sundar Shant in Nepal, um, video footage of the earthquake and expressions of anguish and despair. And then the second half of the video offer images and lyrics uh, which, which provide consolation and provide hope for the future. So that's the first, th first three videos. The fourth and fifth videos I included of, of this sample, I included in my analysis, um, not because they were particularly successful um, in terms of the number of, of views, at least as far as views of them on YouTube are concerned, but, but I thought they were interesting as, ex as examples of uh, ways in which particular players, um, so on the one hand, the Nepal army, on the other hand, um, the Nepal branch of an international NGO, attempted to use the disaster as an opportunity to, to uh, advance particular points of view or agendas. So the next one, the fourth one, is uh, a video called Dale Daruhar uh, by Dinesh DC. Um, this shows three iconic monuments of Kathmandu, the uh, Kastamandap, uh, the Dharara, and the Rani Pokhari. Um, shows them collapsing into piles of rubble. And then they show, it shows a, a young girl recovering treasured items from the ruins of her house before she is rescued and shepherded away to safety by a woman soldier. Then there are a series of images and lyrics that urge uh, communal unity in the face of the disaster. And the song ends with the soldier, the singer and the girl watching these three monuments miraculously growing back up, sort of resurrecting themselves at the end. And then finally, um, is the video by Word Warriors, uh, Timi Paila Matra Sara, which many of you may have seen, a very beautiful uh, video with a very uplifting song. Um, this, is the, this is intended as, as, as it says here, a salute to the youth of Nepal, um, who are shown engaging in post-earthquake rescue and relief operations. Um, and this, the fact that this was an INGO sponsored initiative is, is clear from the very um, high quality of its uh, recording and, and production. So I'll begin by talking about the visual content of, of, these, of these videos. Now, all of them, um, nearly all of the videos available online draw upon a, a huge reservoir of visual material, which mostly they've downloaded from the internet. So in March, 2019, if you, if you did a simple search on, on YouTube for Nepal earthquake, as your search terms, this would produce 6,860,000 results. And they included many repetitions of a number of very spectacular video clips that were filmed either on CCTV cameras or by individuals on cameras or camera phones, including this one, which is, this is a still from one, which I'm sure many of you have seen, uh, which is the, the scene in uh, Bhaktapur Durbar Square at the time of the, the, first, uh, the first major earthquake. I'm oh, sorry, uh, how do I go back? Yeah, okay. Um, so clips like these were recycled in, and incorporated into the music videos. And they're, they're often of, of quite a poor quality or, or very hastily done. So this is uh, from Prakash Kartawal. So it's been done so quickly that, um, um, you know, it hasn't been turned around properly. So there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of haste involved in, in the production of one or two, at this particularly this, this video. Um, and there's also, some ethical issues about actual inclusion of, of images of, of dead people and corpses, uh, presumably without permission of their relatives and so on. So some concerns about some of the practices here and also the quality of them. Um, there's also the question of, of, of geographical um, representation. So although the 2015 earthquakes affected 31 districts in Nepal, the overwhelming majority of the images of destruction, rescue, relief, etc., come from the Capital Valley, from the Kathmandu Valley. And images from the hill districts where the damage was much greater are very, very much rarer. Uh, I guess this is probably partly because the videos were created and uploaded to YouTube very quickly. 
after the earthquake in the case of these videos in particular. Um, at that time, uh, the bulk of the visual material that was available to content creators online, particularly video footage, uh, came from uh, locations within within the Kathmandu Valley. Um, so we see a lot of a lot of pictures such as this from Pankaj Shrestha's uh, video um, of the the, the Patan Durbar Square in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake. Um, so the visual over representation of the valley in these videos um, reflects media coverage of the earthquakes worldwide in the early weeks of the aftermath and gave um, an, inaccurate, an inaccurate impression of the ge geographical distribution of the physical losses that, that had been, been incurred. In terms of the musical content of the, of the videos, it's of course, I'm conscious that Ingemar Grandin is listening, so I'll choose my words carefully. Um, it's important to remember that there's quite a disjuncture between Nepal's traditional folk cultures and that of its growing cities. So if you like, between Prakash Kartuwal on the left, singing his, 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 his Badaune Para, sort of Gaine Gandharva style Geet, and, and a unique poet on the right with his, with his rap. So although Nepali pop retains some features of Nepali music, it's essentially, I would say, an urban form of music. Until, until the 80s, it was possible to divide Nepali popular music into two broad categories, folk songs on the one hand, Lokagit, and modern songs, Adunikit, on the other. The first of these had its origins in the musical cultures of the, the rural communities in which most Nepalis still lived. And we can think there of uh, genres such as the Dohri um, and songs composed in the telling style, the Bhutani Para, um, in couplets of 20 or 28 syllables usually sung by a lone singer accompanied by the, by the sarangi. The Adunik Geet was more cosmopolitan in its instrumentation uh, using guitar, keyboards, as well as tabla uh, and other South Asian instruments and basing its songs on, on tonal harmonies. So I, I would argue that the, the choice of musical, musical genre employed in these videos is probably then an indication of the kind of audience for which they were intended. So Pankaj Shrestha's Baisak Bahra and Dinesh Tisi's Dale Darra are emotional pop ballads uh, delivered in uh, what Raj Karnika and Green have called the sweet polished vocal style. But Prakash Katawa's Ayo Barai and unique pin poets Kina are very different. Ayo Barai belongs to the time honored Batani Para genre and it narrates the earthquake as a story with each verse sung to exactly the same melody and many couplets repeated. It's set to a musical beat known as Kyali uh, and the lyrics employ the Savai meter, meter of pre-modern Nepali poetry. Um, the song's title and refrain with a use of Barai are typical of the Gayane or Gandharva narrative song. On the other hand, Kina uh, a five-minute rap performance by three Nepali hip-hop artists could hardly be more different. Nepali popular music is now performed and recorded in a wild, wide range of, of genres, um, and its sounds may be similar to those heard in, in popular music scenes around, their world, around the world, but their, their meanings differ a little. Um, you could also say that its sociology is rather different. Um, heavy metal and rap music in the UK and the US at least had broadly working class origins. But in Nepal, they're, they're, they're generally heard as upper and middle class sounds. And in fact, the three hip hop artists we encounter in the, in the Kinna video were actually living as students in Melbourne, Australia when they recorded their song. Moving on to thematic content then, um, there's obviously and unsurprisingly quite a lot of overlap between all of these videos, but there are also some, in, some interesting differences and divergences of treatment. And I'll discuss these under five thematic headings. The first being um, 
lamentation. I would argue that four of these five songs contain to a greater or a lesser extent, the elements of a lament, um, catharsis and consolation through the sharing of suffering, dukkha, is clearly a major part of their intended affect. Um, so as I've said, um, Dinesh DC's video opens with an image of three of the best known monuments of central, central Kathmandu uh, vanishing, leaving piles of rubble. And we see the singer, as we see him here, standing on a pile of, on top of a, a pile of broken timbers, uh, the wreckage of, of the Durbar Square in Kathmandu. So that's the first thing, lament, uh, sorrow over the destruction and the loss, whether physical or human. The second message seems to me to be one of, of solidarity, or different kinds of solidarity. Um, national solidarity in the face of a disaster that was constructed by politicians, poets, musicians, as one of national proportions. Um, Dinesh DC's Dara is very literal about this, uh, about uh, the, the plea for religious unity. Um, so there's a series of these still photographs of Muslims at prayer, silhouetted in front of a damaged mosque, um, a man um, in an attitude of prayer before a ruined, ruined house with a crucifix imposed upon it, uh, and then a monk in a lay over tea against the background of the Buddhist stupa of, of Swayampu. There's also In the Kinna video, um, multiple images of non-Nepali people, either groups or individuals holding up this question mark, um, you know, a graphic, graphic representation of the title of the song, Kina, why? Um, these were actually people photographed by unique poets and poet and his friends in the streets of Melbourne. Uh, and the intended message of international solidarity is clear. Pankaj Shrestha's video um, includes an admonition towards the end, pray for Nepal in English, pray for Nepal, um, work for Nepal. And this seems to me to be further evidence of an impulse to forge international solidarity by adopting globalized verbal formulae. So pray for Nepal uh, featured very prominently in gatherings organized by Nepali diaspora communities across the Euro-American world, along with others, other slogans such as stay strong Nepal. I, I would suggest that the concept of praying for a country or a nation um, probably comes from the Christian sphere of religious practice rather more than from, from Hindu or Buddhist practices. There are, of course, a large number of Nepali Christians in, in the world um, and in Nepal too, but this slogan doesn't seem to have uh, had its origin in, in those communities. A further theme is, is, is anger. Um, and this is only really uh, expressed in, in the rap uh, video, Kina, um, where all three of the artists uh, express anger and frustration. Um, First, they, when they're rapping in Nepali, they, they challenge the earthquake itself. Um, I won't try to rap myself, but the lyrics are, are as follows. Kina mero ghar taile takis. Kina kalo badal le takis. Kina sabalai kadal majakis. Ayis basis afno bato lagis. Then they switch to English and they condemn the Nepali political leaders in an American sort of slangy English. Enough with the suffering. Look around and ask yourselves, where the fuck's the government? I can't see them. The nation is in rubble and they're still trying to get their no money doubled, pathetic. This is only the only one of the 54 Nepali music videos relating to the earthquake I've seen during my research that actually expresses real political angle, uh, anger. 
um, although actually it's a recurring theme in the Nepali language poetry of the aftermath, which I've discussed elsewhere. A further theme is one of, of one of hope and optimism. So, and this mirrors um, again the content of a very large number of poetry of poems written in the Nepali language in the aftermath. Um, so, classically lamenting expressions of anguish and horror give way to pleas, pleas for unity, solidarity, cooperation, and they end in assertions that Nepal will rise again, accompanied by um, a set of national symbols. Um, so the key message of, of Dinesh DC's uh, video, Dale Darohar, is, is perhaps that although the heritage monuments have, have fallen, uh, people have still shouldered have still shouldered their responsibilities, particularly the army. Um, so we see the young girl walking through the rubble of her destroyed home, um, recovering an old photograph of herself and her mother. And then secondly, she picks up three books from the ruins of the house. Uh, these are a Nepali translation of, of Gorky's mother, Ama, Bijay Mala's Koi Kina Barbad Hos, and Hari Bhakta Katiwal's Yo jindigi kai kai jindigi, kai kai jindigi. So the, the titles of these books perhaps are, are taken um, as being appropriate for the situation. Then a young female soldier arrives to shepherd the girl away to a row of blue Chinese tents, presumably on the Tundi Kale. And then we see the soldier, the singer and the girl standing in the ruins of Kathmandu Durbar Square, whose monuments rebuild themselves miraculously. And the girl, then raises her arms triumphantly, standing on top of the temple plinth and the, and the three heritage buildings reappear, as I've said, miraculously. A, third, a, third, a further theme of these videos is, is one of reconciliation. Um, and as I've said, Dinesh DC, DC's uh, video Dale Darahar and the World Warriors Timi Paila, um, they aim explicitly to improve public perceptions of the nation's security forces on the one hand and Nepali youth on the other. Um, these, are, these are two elements of, of Nepal's society that were ranged against one another, one another during the decade of Nepal's Maoist People's War. The opening frames of Timmy Baila announce in English text that it's the video is, <clears throat> is dedicated to the youth of the country, celebrating their selfless compassion, contribution and profound display of responsibility during the post, post earthquake relief, rehabilitation and reconstruction pro processes. The Nepali limit lyrics of the song are addressed to the youth of Nepal using the informal second person pronoun Timmy. To begin with, they're, they're, spoken over, they're spoken over a series of still and video images of young Nepalis engaged in comforting the elderly, clearing rubble, erecting shelters, uh, distributing relief supplies. And then the song breaks into its uplifting Nepali chorus. Um, again, I won't embarrass you by singing this, but the words are Timi Baila Matra Sara Bato Afe De Kincha. Timi anta matre gara, sata afe betincha. Timi bota ho, atauta ho, ruko mato ma nipalane. Timi ago ho, abajaga lao, antiharo lai jalane. The video was commissioned by the INGO Search for Common Ground, and I, I met Ayush Joshi, their Kathmandu representative, who explained to me that the volunteer surge that occurred in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake involved mostly young people whose public image in Nepal had for many years been somewhat negative. Um, so Joshi contacted Word Warriors, uh, a Kathmandu based group of young spoken word poets um, who perform poetry in both English and Nepali. Anybody who lives in Kathmandu is, is aware of them, I'm sure. Um, and he asked them to compose a song that would become what he called an anthem for young people. Um, 
in the video for this song and, and, and also for the Dale Daruhar, um, images of young army and police personnel are mixed in with the images of, of young civilian volunteers, rather more in the Dale Daruhar uh, video than in Timmy Pila, but they still appear as this is a still from the Timmy Pila uh, video. This seems to me to be a fairly clear attempt to enhance the standing of the security forces. Um, in the Word Warriors song, the, the camera dwells lovingly on the face of a, a young soldier as, as here. And in the Dale Daruhar uh, video, uh, we see the Nepal army's rather clumsy efforts to seize the opportunity with long opening credits offering special thanks to the Nepal army. <clears throat> so that's sort of in terms of thematic um, sorry I'll just stick with that one for a minute so I've talked about the content of these five videos um, finding answers to I think rather an interesting question of who actually watched these videos um, is difficult because it would require audience research that was beyond the scope of my investigation um, what we can do perhaps is offer some suggestions about the nature of the publics that were assumed to exist by, by the makers of these videos or which were called into, into, beings by, into being by them. The, the contours and composition of the Nepali online public, which is what we're talking about here, um, obviously will be determined partly by questions of access. Um, now, while the cassette recordings of the 1980s could be enjoyed only by those with a cassette tape player, so similarly, um, anybody who wants to consume music videos must own or have access to a device, a device that will link them to the internet. Um, and many Nepalis who consume online content do so, do so by means of um, uh, streaming apps on, on mobile, mobile phones. Um, in the UK in, 19, in 2017, um, it's reported that 95% of the people aged between 16 and 24 owned a smartphone. Um, and Manovich uh, writes that this, um, this trend toward, towards regular casual access to the internet can also be seen in many other um, growing consumer economies. Um, but to, to borrow William Gibson's famous acronym, the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. So it's difficult to ascertain the number and distribution of internet users in Nepal. And the data sources I've been looking at seem to contradict one another to some extent. So in 2017, an Asia Foundation survey found that only about 29% of Nepal's population used the internet and the internet use was strongly correlated with education, income and age. In 2019, the Nepal Telecommunications Authority said that the number of internet users in Nepal had reached 20 million with 55% accessing it via mobile phone networks. Um, a research brief, a very interesting publication by M Martin Chotari in May 2018, showed that to these categories of haves and have-nots in terms of internet access in Nepal, uh, there should be added a third category, the have-less. Uh, the, the members of the have-less category spend less time online, consume limited data and rely on cyber cafes for internet access. So I thought in terms of um, how to gauge these video creators sense of the what audience they, they were trying to reach. Um, one aspect of them that would be interesting to interrogate a little would be their, their language content. <clears throat> so the extent to which they include included English language content um, and also the extent to which this content whether it's English or Nepali, was subtitled. It seems to me to be an indication at least of the kinds of public their creators had in mind. So I've summarized this in this little table here. 
Um, so Ayo Barai and Dale Darohar contain no English language content at all. Uh, on the other hand, Dale Darohar provides English subtitles to all its lyrics, but Ayo Barai does not. So it would seem pretty clear that Prakash Kartuwal didn't create Ayo Barai for any audience that didn't know Nepali. So in contrast to this, uh, we see a lot of English language lyrical content in both Kina and Timi Paila Matrasara. Um, so this suggests to me that their makers intended them to reach a viewership, which was not just a Nepali speaking to, uh, domestic audience, but an audience beyond that. Um, it's probably safe to assume that the, the target audience for Timi Paila Matrasara um, included foreigners who didn't understand, do not, do not understand Nepali in, the, in that it was commissioned by an NGO, um, which, who I assume wanted to uh, present this more positive image of Nepali youth, not only to the Nepali public, but also, also to international and national agencies working in development and reconstruction. Having said that, it's, it's kind of odd that it's Nepali lyrics don't, having, don't have any English subtitles. They simply have transcription of the Nepali words. The inclusion of English language lyrics in Kina and Timi, Matra Parasa, uh, Timi Paila Matrasara um, also, I think, acknowledge the existence of not only a potential non-Nepali audience, but also of a Nepali audience across the world for whom English language content would be meaningful. This isn't because this Nepali audience, this global Nepali audience would therefore understand it more easily, but it's also in the sense that it spoke to that audience's conception of itself as part of a wider global network of feeling and communication which was, shouldn't be bounded by language uh, or geographical location. <clears throat> it's, it's very clear um, that many consumers of Nepali online content are based outside Nepal. So I was able to get YouTube analytics through the kindness of Unique Poet only for, uh, for Kina, uh, which had received by the time we looked at the, at the data, 315,945 views, um, we were able to establish that only 46.7% of its viewers were located in Nepal. Um, the remainder of the people who had watched the Kina video on, on YouTube were based in, in India, which was 16.4%. So India and Nepal comes together to about 63%. The other people who had watched it were based in the USA, Australia, the UAE, Malaysia, Qatar, the UK, Saudi, Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Canada, and Germany. Um, the YouTube analytics also give you the gender of the viewer. And it was very striking that 98.5% of its viewership was recorded to be male. Um, so if music videos are effective landing points of youth cultural texts, as Lurz suggest, that it seems clear that the Nepali public that was being called into being by this particular song in its video was male and probably either urban or overseas. So I move, thank you for your, your patient listening, I'll move to some kind of conclusion. These music videos, I think, can be seen as a part of an ongoing conversation taking place among and between the sections of the global Nepali population, which possesses the resources and the expertise needed to produce and upload such content on the one hand, and also has access to the devices that are needed in order to access and consume it on the other. So I would suggest that the, the musical and lyrical content and the language and style of these videos suggest that their, their creators conceived of this online population as three overlapping and intertwined Nepali publics. 
oops, I wanted to show you one by one, never mind. Um, so the first was a national public um, that was conceived of as predominantly traditional in outlook. Um, when we look at the 54 music videos that were still online when I did this research, um, the, the major, they were very much dominated by Lokgeet genres, such similar to the one that we saw in um, Prakash Kartuwal's Ayo Barai uh, video. So this suggests, at least from this very slim basis of evidence, that folk music genres, if we can call them that, retain greater currency and popularity across the country as a whole uh, than the Nepali pop music of its, of its urban centers if we can limit them in that way. If this is true, then uh, it's a fact that all Nepali musicians will know. Um, it may be that the performance of these songs in so many videos in this traditional style, maybe it was trying to also convey a, a comforting message. Um, that is, despite all the devastation, the, the cherished local traditions will still, will still endure. The second national public um, was probably conceived of as more predominantly globalized and, and urban, um, whose musical preferences tended towards the more kind of polished modern tones um, of, of, Nepali, of Nepali pop. And the third um, was an international Nepali diaspora, um, which overlapped considerably in terms of its in, in socio-cultural terms uh, with the urban national public. Historically, of course, it's from these last two Nepali publics that political activism and dissent have been most likely to emanate. Um, and we know from threats made to makers of satirical music videos in the last couple of years that people who hold political power in Nepal uh, know that po popular music videos can influence public opinion. Um, it's pretty clear that con the creators of this content share this view of the power of their, their medium uh, because they do embed social and political messages in some of these videos um, to some extent. Um, however, as I've, as I've pointed out, only one of the five videos I've talked about here, or in fact, this is the only one of the entire corpus of material I've identified, contains any articulation of political anger. And, and it's quite untypical the genre as a whole in this sense. By and large, the videos don't admit much contestation. Um, by and large also, they don't reflect the disproportionate impact the 2015 earthquakes had on populations that were already disadvantaged for reasons of caste or ethnicity or region. As I've said, their tone is generally uh, consolatory, uh, sometimes celebrating uh, the roles played by particular parts of Nepali society, uh, and by and large they assert Nepali resilience um, and offering hope for the future. Um, perhaps most importantly, um, they create and reinforce a narrative in which an event that was experienced viscerally by individuals in particular locations uh, think of shaking ground, collapsing houses, hillsides sh sliding away. This individual atomized experience becomes one that is experienced collectively um, as a more abstract event on a national scale or even a transnational scale, well beyond those deadly seconds of the, of the, earth, the earth shaking and the fear that that in, induced. So, um, Maritime so I, I, will, I, will, I will stop there. How should you, I should unshare this, I guess. Ajahn. Yeah.